I'd like to take you through the new features in Muse 2.0, uh, which some of you are probably saying, well, first of all, what is Muse? Or <laughs> second of all, you're saying, wait a minute, didn't Muse just get released? Well, yes, it did. But we're in public beta for the next version, and you can join it if you want to. If you open your version of Muse, you can see the mine says Adobe Muse beta, you can join the beta. It's a public beta. To join, what you can do is you can open up any site you've got. And we've got to get to the help menu. That's the idea here. If you get to help, you'll see help improve Adobe Muse. Choose that. And if you select join the Adobe Muse beta program, what will happen is when you click OK, the next time it's going to say, hey, there is an update to your program. Do you want to install it? It is going to replace your current version of Muse with the beta version. There's good to this, and there's bad. Um, you'll see here that uh, it, you can't files created in the beta version cannot be used in any previous versions, which, hey, we get that. Um, also, it, it, there could be a few things that are a little buggy. It's still it, it's doing pretty well, actually, from what I've seen, but it, it could be a little buggy. So you just got to understand that that could happen. If you decide that you need to go back to your working version of Muse, your non-beta program version of Muse, you can always come back to this menu, turn this off, click OK, and what it'll do is it'll revert back. It'll download the other and install it. So you can do that too. All right, so let's go through what's new in Adobe Muse 2. Uh, I'm not going to go into any particular order here. I'm just going to kind of jam through. Let me open up a page. And you know what? I'm going to go open up a site that actually has some content. That would make a little more sense, I think. So this is the, um, the Katie's Cafe site that was on Adobe.com. And I'll open this thing up. And I'll open up a page, let's say. A couple things that we can work with uh, that are brand new in here. We now have guides. And this is something that a lot of people were like, really, there aren't guides in Muse. But we now have them. So if you want to, you can double click to create guides. You can click and drag. You can do things like you can do in InDesign, like click and drag, hold down the shift key, it snaps. You can go to the transform panel. Let's say you go to transform and change the X or Y values. You can delete them by hitting delete. You can click on them to select them. You'll also notice, notice as my cursor goes around, you're seeing this feedback. So we're seeing this little label out here, this little tool tip, which is showing us what we're about to click on. Like, what is this thing? It's a text frame. It's a guide. Okay, different things like that. So you can see right there, guide. Uh, that type of content you can turn off if you want to. If I go up here to preferences, this is new. So you go to music preferences, you'll see rollover hint label. You can turn some of that stuff off if you really want to. We'll also see something new in here called Type Recent Fonts. We will get to that. Let me cancel that. So we do have guides. We also have, let's suppose we have multiple objects here that we want to align. I'll zoom in a bit. Well, if we select them, we now have an align panel. Instead of trying to use smart guides, we can get to the align panel and just align content to each other. We can also align content to what's called the content area. That's the page area or the white box out there, essentially. A lot of times you're also going to find that in Muse 2, the next version here, that a lot of the control panel content is now static, meaning it kind of stays in the same place, and there's a lot more up there. So it's trying to fit a lot more. So you'll see things like the word align to go to the align options or text to go to the text options, which is cool because I don't even have to select the text inside to try and change the fonts or you know, the sizes or different things like that. So that's another nice thing. Speaking of text... If I go in, let's say, to visit Katie's here, and I want to change the font, I come up top, you'll see that we now have a new font menu, essentially, which allows you to do things like, I don't know, filter by list. You can start to type in something. If you decide that you only know part of the name, like Sans or something like that, you can type in, like, the end part of it, and it'll still filter for you. We have samples, so you'll see a sample word here. We have the ability to now see each one of these Pretty easily, if you click on it, it's going to kind of scroll up to it and show you that content. Uh, there's just tons of stuff in the font list here you can kind of go through yourself. But there's also been a couple fixes, bug fixes, things like that, the cross-platform, Mac Windows, as far as fonts are concerned, which is great for me. So we've got the Align panel over there. Uh, another great thing is the ability to do what's called Asset Upload. So if I look at my assets panel over here, I've got a bunch of stuff, and yes, I have a bunch of missing images. That's fine. But suppose that you're working on a file, and you go grab some code off the web, and maybe it's this cool slideshow thing. And you don't realize, though, at the time that the slideshow requires these images that they give you, and they require maybe a JavaScript file. Well, 
we can now do what's called add files for upload. And what that means is anything that we need to get stuff to work, let's say a flash file that needs XML or images, you can now say add files for upload, go choose that, click on the stuff you need to upload, and this is not, this is stupid, I'm doing text files, why would I do that? But anyway, so I'll go grab a couple images for instance. What it's going to do is it's going to associate them with the Muse site file and show you them in the assets panel and say we're going to upload these when you publish the site. So that's pretty cool, okay? Um, there's been a lot of improvements to code generation as far as how things are created or written, effects, different things like that. JavaScript libraries, things have been changed a bit for the better. One of the big things in here is working with a form. This is really cool. Let me, um, let me get rid of some of this stuff. I'll delete it. If I come over to my widgets library panel, you'll see new forms category. We have a longer contact form and a simple contact form. You'll notice this little icon to the right here, this little BC. It's configured to work with Adobe Business Catalyst, which means if you publish from within Muse and you publish and, and use one of your either five included hosting packages or you pay for this using Adobe Business Catalyst, this form will work. Okay. If you export, can't guarantee it's going to work on it. <laughs> okay. It's, it it's designed to work with Business Catalyst. So if I drag it out, You'll see it works like other widgets. It's sort of like a, kind of like a big group of stuff. You can set options for it, like, oh, what's the name of this thing? I'll call this contact. Who do you want to email this to? It's gonna when somebody hits submit, it's gonna email the stuff in the form to the person's email address you put right here, and you can put multiple by putting semicolons. You can also tell it to go to a different page as soon as they hit submit. So you could create a page in your sitemap that you don't actually display. It says something like, hey, thanks for filling this out. Why don't you check out this next? You can also link to file, and we'll talk about that. We can add standard fields if we want to. We can remove standard fields. We can add custom fields if we want to go in and you know, do some different stuff. We can edit all these separately if we want to. Now, if you decide that you want to move this around, we don't have to have it look like this. You can go in just like any other widget and start to move the stuff around. You can align it. We can click and drag form fields, put them in different places, locations. We can go in and change things like background fills, background colors, borders, different things like that. If we want to change them separately, we can always go in to the entire form, my bad, right here, and say, do not edit together. You'll also notice that if I click on each one of these fields out here, that there are separate options for each field. Things like it's required or not. Do you want to show a label or not? Do you want to have message text like, hey, it's required, okay? Anyway, this one is required, by the way. You can't turn that off. We've got a lot of variations we can do here with the forms. The sky is the limit. But one of the better, when I th think one of the great things about this is if I go preview this, let's take a look at it. You'll see right here, we can actually do things like set rollovers on these. You'll see it's got text in there to begin with. If I go in and submit, it's going to say it's got to work with a business catalyst form. Now, it won't show this on the web. This is during working in Muse. But you're going to see what it does. It's going to highlight everything that is required and use something like jQuery highlighting there to show you what's going on. Really cool stuff you don't have to do. You don't have to code any of this stuff. I like to design. So we have two different main forms that we can work with that are just different starting points. You'll also find that with the other widgets that we have, if I go over to the widgets library, let me grab, let's say, like the light box display, and I'll drag that out. We now have some new features in here as far as setting delays. Uh, Second-wise, as far as, let's say, we say autoplay, we can tell how many seconds to autoplay. And we can tell it to shuffle. Really cool. Those are great features. Those are things that a lot of people have been asking for. You'll also see that we can align content within, and there's a lot of other features. The menu items have been changed and made better, and just a lot of great things there. Um, we can also, if you, let's suppose that you don't want to publish with Business Catalyst. You want to go, let's say, publish to GoDaddy or one and one or some other host. Well, you don't have to export and publish separately now. You can go up to File and choose Upload to FTP Host. This is an FTP program essentially built into Muse, where if you get the information from your paid host, they usually give you like a, you know, the FTP, the login information. Type it in here. You can upload the files directly from Muse to your other host. That's awesome. Another great thing we can do, if you work with Adobe Edge, 
which I think is a phenomenal tool. Um, Edge is, is a way for us to create interactivity without using Flash. So you could create some really cool features without using flash to be able to get this stuff to go it uses html and you know css and javascript to create some really cool stuff well what we can do currently is we can actually publish to indesign slash dps and this might change in the future someday this may there may be a muse export who knows but we can go out and we can import this edge content into adobe muse so let me put this on my desktop I'll choose it and say, slap it there. I'll save it. So I'm going to choose the InDesign one because it's going to create what's called an OAM file, a .oam file. Now I'll save this. I'll go up to File and I'll Publish. It's going to save it out. What we can then do is we can go back over to Muse. I can place that file that it creates just like an image. So there it is right there, the OAM. I'll open it up. It's got all the content, everything it needs, JavaScript, CSS, blah, 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 to work. If I want to, what I can do, you'll see it's actually listed here. I could go to, to Edge again, rather, change it, export it again, publish it again, rather, and then change it in here, update it in here. So it's part of the Assets panel, and it is linked to the original OAM file. Edge integration, that's going to open up a lot of doors, really pretty great. Um, if you export, so if we go up to File, Export as HTML, we now get a, um, a sitemap. Uh, created. So sitemap.xml is generated. So if I say that like, this is my site, you got to make sure you have the right domain here. And I'll go put it somewhere. I'll go put it on my desktop and say export. I'll just show you this. And I click OK. It's going to take a couple seconds here and I need it to be an actual URL, please. So I'll export it. It's going to take a couple seconds to save it out. It is now cobbling together all of the HTML, the CSS, everything necessary to get this file or to get this site to run. There it is. I go out to my desktop to show you, I'll see the export file. We will see this little sitemap XML file, which is information that a lot of search engines can use. So it's for SEO, search engine optimization. All right. Um, we also now have browser fill improvements. Let me do this. I'm going to go over to my master page, over to master, and I'll zoom out a little bit. If you go to browser fill here and take a look, you'll see that yeah, we've got our solid, we've got our gradient we can do, that sort of thing. We can also go in with an image, and we can tell it to scale to fit or scale to fill as well. So let me do this. I'm going to put an image back here, which hopefully it will make a little more sense. Let me throw a, uh, oh, it's going to be really stupid. I'll put space back there. And typically what's going to happen is we're going to say original size, or we're going to say tile or something like that, and you're going to see it look like this. Well, if we choose scale to fill, What's going to happen? You're going to see a lot of sites like this these days. If I go to preview, there's new options for our background images. Go to preview, and I take the edge of Muse here, let's say down here, and I resize it. You're going to see what's going to happen to that image. It's going to resize to fill, and it's not doing it justice right here. But anyway, so we've got some new options there. Um, let's see what else we have here. Control strip we already talked about. Oh, if you happen to have, let me go to a page with some content. This looks awesome now, by the way. If you have any styles, like paragraph styles or character styles, you can drag and drop those styles or that content to be able to apply it to text on your page. You can also go and grab colors, let's say swatches, and drag and drop them to apply them to different areas. Drag and drop capabilities for a lot of things now. If this looks really dumb, let me back up. If we want to, we can also, let's say I want to create something like this. Let me go to one of my pages here. And I'll go to visit and get rid of this. And I already got rid of all my content. Let's suppose that I go to my master page. How about that? That'll help. Go to your master. I want somebody to be able to click here and download a PDF. Okay. So I'll say click to click to get PDF. All right. You can do whatever you want. Let me zoom in there. We now have the ability in the hyperlink menu up here to link to a file which means we could do put in a PDF file, uh, an EXE, uh, just about anything, a zip file if you want to. And if I click link to file, and typically I'd have something prepared, but I don't. So I will say the Photoshop file, whatever. I go out to preview the page to show you this. It's going to have a download. So I go click to get PDF. Pretend that was a PDF right there. You can say, all right, there you go. Go ahead and download it. So you could have a series of things people could download from your site. Okay, um, 
selection. I already talked to you a little bit about that. Widgets. That's you got. That's actually most of it. Um, I think I got most of the things that I need to show you. There's a lot of stuff up here. There really is a lot of things, and there's probably a few things that I, I neglected to show you. Um, but this is most of it. Uh, and one of the things you'll actually see, I think I did not show this, but you'll see that we now have states up here. So we don't have to go to the states panel to be able to access these to change them, which makes it a little bit easier, to be honest. There's a lot of little things like that. Anyway, this is most of what's new and improved in Adobe Muse. You're going to find there's more. This is all the time I have. So if you want to take a look at these before it's out there, don't forget, you can go to your version, version of Muse. You can go to help. Help improve Adobe Muse and join the beta program. It will convert yours to the beta by downloading it. And then you can jump in and start using all the features that I've shown you today.